Is Disney Cruise Line still worth it in 2021? Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Anne with some more of your Diz needs. Today, we're talking about if Disney Cruise Line is still worth it in 2021, and specifically on the Disney Wonder. There's going to be a lot of detail in this video, so you might want to get a pen and paper or a computer, however you record your details. And before we get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe and ring that little bell, then you'll be notified as soon as we put out any new information. Okay, so, is Disney Cruise Line still worth it in 2021 on the Disney Wonder? To be honest, it's subjective. So, as a single mom, I took my son on a Disney cruise. Before we went to Disney Cruising, we were doing parks. And I thought that we had kind of hit the best price with the parks. And then one day I really looked at the numbers on a Disney cruise. It was just much more cost effective for us to take a Disney cruise. My son was about 14, so he definitely ate a lot. The unlimited food on the Disney cruise line as well as 24 hour room service was really great for that. He could get whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. We had been doing a lot of peanut butter and honey sandwiches microwave mac and cheese in the room so he was really excited to just be able to get whatever he wants and there is good quality food on the disney cruise as well it's not just peanut butter and honey sandwiches that's for sure so when you go to the website on the disney wonder the first two cruises that are four nights or longer are what i'm going to compare as a single mom it was just more cost effective for me to take us on a cruise here's how that breaks down the first one that's four nights or longer on the wonder is galveston it's a four night cruise from galveston January 24th through 28th. It's going to have two sea days and one day at Cozumel. I think that's ideal. Four days gets you on the ship for long enough. Three days is just too fast. Obviously longer is preferable, but four nights is really great, especially if you haven't done a cruise before. Just in case you don't like being out in the ocean, that's good to know. And not be stuck for seven days. So two adults, an inside stateroom is $1,698 for four nights. January 24th through 28th, 2022. That breaks down for two people to $425 per day for both people. At first blush, that sounds like it's a lot, but it really isn't. If you're paying for a hotel room, it's at least $150 to go to Disneyland or Disney World just for the hotel room. You're also going to spend at least $250 to get into the parks for two people. Right there, you're already at $400, and you haven't even bought food yet. So $425 for the day for two people is a great price. Obviously, if you really love the rides and that's what you're going for, you need to go to Disneyland or Disney World. But if you enjoy characters, if you enjoy broad Broadway caliber stage shows if you enjoy fine dining okay their main dining room is not exactly fine dining but it's really good if you enjoy these types of things I would strongly consider Disney Cruise the other cruise to compare with is a four night out of New Orleans it also has two sea days and one port day at Cozumel Two adults for this one is $1,787, and it's February 14th through 18th, 2022. So this one is literally less than $100 more than the other one, and it leaves on Valentine's Day. What a great Valentine's Day present. That's $446 per day for both people. That's like $20 more than the other one. And again, just getting into the parks and the hotel is going to cost you a minimum of $400, and you haven't even eaten yet. If you happen to book this Valentine's Day cruise, either as a gift or a Surprise, please come back and let us know in the comments below how it went. I think that would be really cool. So a Disney cruise is absolutely worth it. If you've got two people, if you can go in the off seasons like January and February, if you've got six people in your family, you have to get two staterooms or you might want to do a suite. The ways to make Disney cruise affordable is to be able to go off season. Their really busy, high expense times are during school vacations. So end of May through beginning of September, actually end of August, beginning of September, the Alaska season will start to ramp down to a little bit lower prices. And obviously Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, they have themed cruises for those times of year. So those can get busy as well, but you really can find affordable prices. You just got to go look. They have them listed with the cheapest first. There is one that's two nights for $1,250. I don't think that's a great deal, but I think four nights for $1,690. $98 is a really good deal. I have been on Norwegian Cruise Line and at first glance it looked like it was cheaper because it's priced per person. And then as you add on the other extras it becomes more expensive because they don't have free sodas, they don't have free room service. So you just got to look at the math and see what works for you. I absolutely think the Disney Wonder is still worth it in 2021. It is my favorite ship and I also think it's worth it because it's a little smaller ship but it has a lot less capacity. Guest capacity on the Disney Wonder is 2,000 
700 people. For the Disney Fantasy, it's 4,000 people. The Disney Fantasy has three more deck, and it does have a little more room. The food just seems to be a little bit better on the Disney Wonder as well. I think that's due to the lower capacity. I also find that it's more enjoyable for me on the Wonder because lower capacity. It's easier to find deck space, easier to find a seat at the piano bar at night. So those are some of the reasons that I think Disney Wonder is still worth it in 2021. Also, when we priced it out for the Norwegian, it was basically the same cost and it doesn't have that Disney feel. Disney just adds a little extra to everything and Norwegian didn't have great stage shows like Disney does either. Actually, their food wasn't as good either. They did have pretty good service and the ship was fine. We actually got on right after it had been refurbished, so that was nice, but still, I love Disney Cruise because how it just kind of tugs at the heartstrings. Everybody has a great time. You don't have to have kids to go on a Disney Cruise, and honestly, I recommend going without children. <laughs> you can just spend all of your time in the adult areas, and it's quite fun. Okay, there's a few more things I want to mention as far as whether or not it's worth it. The room sizes are definitely larger on Disney Cruise. It also just feels really safe on Disney Cruise Line. They have a trusted brand. Also, since they don't have the drink packages, I think there's just less drunk people on the ship. It's just nice to have a ship without a smoky casino in the middle of it. And I'm not against casinos, I just don't like them on the cruise ship. So the breakdown per person per day is part of it, but you also have to consider the logistics. Transportation to and from venues, time saved by not figuring out transportation, not having to schlep on the buses with everybody. It's really a lot faster to go to your room and then back to the restaurant on the Disney Wonder because it is a little smaller. I want to get into specifics as well. So dining. Is the dining still worth it? Apollo dinner and brunch were $40 per person when they last sailed in 2020. I do believe that's worth it if you have not been before. Their dinner is really good. Their souffle everybody raves about. So I would recommend the souffle if you go. I personally love their brunch best. I love the brunch where it's all set out with just seafood, sweet breads, so many different selections to choose from. And then there's also a menu to choose from as well. And I really enjoy that type of brunch experience. Tiana's Place Restaurant was created about five years ago, I believe, on the Disney Wonder, and it's so much fun. They have the crawfish crooners who will play up on stage. Tiana comes out. They have the beignets, Cajun and Creole food. It's really good, and it's a fun experience. They also have the French Quarter Lounge. The French Quarter Lounge was added when they did the last dry dock in 2019, and there are two things that I think are kind of fun there. There's two different menu experiences. The first one is called the Le Bouffe Favorite. It offers a coffee of your choice, served with beignets, a chocolate truffle, macaron, madeleine, caramel chocolate sauce, and Evangeline Praline liqueur. In place of the liqueur, guests of all ages can enjoy a Dr. Facilier potion. I think it's absolutely adorable and I'm definitely going to try it the next time we're on the ship. The other one that I think looks fun is the Lilit cocktail. You can choose from three small bites to pair with a serving of the Lilit Blanc, Lilit Rosé, or Lilit Rouge and tonic water. I just like little fun things, snacks and alcohol that go together. It makes me happy especially in the middle of the ocean. Animator's Palette is also a lot of fun. They have some, well, extra animations that they've added over the last years that make it really a fun dining and family experience. I also like the tastings on all the cruise ships. That's always fun to do tastings. Make sure and pre-book those for your cruise. Castaway Key is Disney Cruise's private island, and Serenity Bay is the private island's adult-only area. Their lunch over there is fabulous. They'll have ribeye on it almost every time, so definitely check that out. Another way that Disney Cruise Line is a little more affordable is that you can carry on beer or wine. There's a drink of the day cup you can get on the first day and just get a drink of the day in that cup every day. It's like $5.50 for the drink. They also have a beer mug and coin that you can do that. You just get a little bit more beer for a little bit lower price. On a seven night or longer, they have captain's gatherings, which will include free drinks in the main atrium or grand hall, depending on which ship you are on. There's also a ton of activities to do. There's the free kids clubs that are included. Nursery is an extra cost, but the other kids clubs have so many activities that are really cool and they're all included. There's trivia for the adults and families the live stage shows that are Broadway caliber but still have that Disney feel. There's evening entertainment for the adults would have adult game shows, interactive game shows that are a lot of fun. They have that for family as well with interactive game shows and interactive activities. There are also little cooking exhibits that will happen where you can see a Disney Cruise chef preparing one of the favorite items on board. Some other fun activities on Disney Cruise Line are Pirate Night. You have that when you have a Bahamian or Caribbean cruise. The specific night will be outlined in your navigation 
navigator. You might want to bring a costume for that night. You absolutely do not have to dress up, but some people like to. They'll see people in full pirate costume and you'll see people that are just wearing the banana that's provided. Kind of an evening. They'll give you pirate bandanas in your room. The main dining will be themed to the pirate menu that night and pirate ambiance. There will be a show for the Pirates of the Caribbean and also a deck and dance party afterwards. And it will cap off with fireworks. And these are real fireworks like you'll see at the parks. Disney is the only cruise line who has permission to do fireworks at sea and it's really cool. Disney Cruise also has some fun activities like a princess gathering in the main atrium or grand hall. So instead of four lines like they do at the park, there's basically one line. You stand in that one and then you get to meet all four of the princesses. I'm pretty sure that you need a ticket for this. It's a princess gathering it's free you just need to sign up so check into that when you do your online check-in if you don't find it then then check into it as soon as you get on the ship and just go straight to guest services and ask them about it they also have first run Disney movies any movie that is playing in a theater on land will also be in theater on the ship and they'll typically have about the last six months or so of Disney movies on there about five that'll be in rotation they'll also have a deck party for sail away which is another fun experience the Disney cruise ships are also super clean we went on Norwegian like I said and and the cleanliness factor was just night and day. And it's not like Norwegian ships were dirty. They weren't, they were clean. But there was just little bits of cups and debris thrown in corners around the hot tub, by the elevators. Disney Cruise Line is just completely on top of that and it is spick and span everywhere. Even the portholes are clean, which I don't know how they pull that off. The main reasons we love the Disney Wonder so much is because it has a lower capacity. The crew is fabulous. And a lot of times there's long-term crew members on on Disney Wonder so it can have a little bit more personal feel because your evening servers do travel with you every night to the restaurants so you do really get to know them you see your room host a couple of times a day those interactions really add an extra enhancement to the cruise that you just can't replace we also love that there's less people on Serenity Bay when we're over there because there's just less capacity on the ship if the Disney Fantasies at Castaway Key there's 4,000 people there could be a lot of adults over at Serenity Bay if Disney Wonders at Castaway Key there's 2,700 people that's just math. There's going to be less people in the adult area. And when I have gone on the Wonder to Castaway Key, there's practically no one over there. It's fabulous. We also love the Disney Wonder for some of its spaces. We love the Cadillac Lounge, which is exclusive to the Disney Wonder. And we love Tiana's Place. So having those on board just make it even more fun. Okay, we always got to finish with some pro tips. So here you go. Flo's French Fries for the win. If you have a hangover, even if you don't, make sure and get some Flo's French Fries. They are by far the best I've ever had. Also, ice cream on deck. There's almost always free ice cream on deck. They have a few soft serve machines that are open most of the day. They're closed during the evening. They're definitely closed during late night so I would check on that but ice cream on deck is a big hit with a lot of people. From room service you want to get the all hands on deck cheese platter. If you like cheese it's the best. Okay, it's not the absolute best, but it's really good. It's just fun to have some all hands on deck cheese in your room. If you bring a bottle of wine, you can have wine and cheese in your room while you're getting ready for dinner. And they also have free charms. Just go up to the port shopping desk and ask them there how you get the free charm. Thanks for joining us. We're going to have some more of these specific for the magic, the dream, the fantasy, and the wish. Please let us know any questions you might have in the comments below. And we'll see you real soon with some more Disney's.